The historic French elections heating up just days before the highly anticipated first round of voting, which is on Sunday, and the polls reacting to that Paris terror attack, indicating a very tight race among the top four candidates. But all eyes are on far-right candidate Marine Le Pen, uh, who, Marine Le Pen, who's, whose populist policies actually parallel that of Brexit and much of President Trump's rise. And so the question is, could this election outcome be a populist three-peat? Here to discuss is Jillian Melcher and Vince Colonnese. And Jillian, you know, all the polls generally say that it should be Le Pen and Macron. Yep. Uh, but he would wipe, like, just crush her in a general election. And we've come to say, uh, maybe not so fast. Yeah, I mean, this is actually making me feel really good about the U.S. election. It's a lot of bad choices. On one hand, we've got um, far right. Uh, she's denied the French role in shipping Jews to the Nazis. Uh, really extreme anti-Semitic comments from her party. And then on the other hand, you've got a leftist candidate who actually made a video game where he's shaking down politicians for money and picking up coins out of their pockets. So I think these are poor choices. They bode badly for the French economy and for the global economy. Yeah, I mean, Vince, they, they've, got a, they've got a guy who wants to get out of, the, out of the euro, out of NATO, out of the World Bank, out of the IMF, and restructure the EU, if not get out of that. And that's not Le Pen, right? That's the communists. <laughs> I mean, so, uh, you know, they, I mean, you talk about dissatisfaction, but this is a critically important because if, if we do see something where the far right and far left were propelled, to the final round. I think the markets would open down significantly under pressure on Monday. Yeah, I think in France, especially given that it's the second largest Eurozone economy, there's going to be a lot of concern about whether or not, you know, France will continue to be a Euro member or even a member of the EU. Now, I think that there's a lot of things politically that would prevent Marine Le Pen from quickly getting something like removal from the Eurozone or the EU in place, France's constitution for one. And the fact that she needs to throw this to a referendum, let the people vote on whether they want to leave. And in, in both the Eurozone case and the EU case, it's not entirely clear the polls are on her side as much as she's made progress individually as a candidate. Although we've seen Theresa May use her political capital to call for early elections, and it's, it's a de facto second vote on Brexit uh, in case there was any questions. You know, part of this whole thing, though, and you, you talked about the, the far right over there, is <clears throat> sort of a cultural clash. Yeah. And, and France is, I think, has just about had it. And, you know, I saw you wrote a story uh, about geno genital uh, mutilation in, in yeah. Michigan. and. You know, Americans are getting to that point, too, where they're seeing some customs in other countries that, are, that we abhor, that we could never accept in this country. And there's no attempt by a large chunk of the Muslim population in Europe, particularly Paris, to assimilate. That's yeah. a problem that they, I think they've brought on themselves. It's something that their politicians have embraced because they have this multiculturalism in place that's um, but, not, not culturally assertive. Right. And I think when you look at what has built modern France, I mean, going back through de Gaulle's memoirs, talking about the French spirit, the, the pride in French culture and the cultural assertiveness, I think it's one thing to show compassion. I think it's another thing to not expect assimilation and not to be confident in your culture. And a lot of what we're seeing with this populist wave, not just in France, not just in the U.S., but globally, is a reassertion of cultural values and, and a, a rejection of the idea that all cultures are equal and, and equally good. Well, also, Vince, uh, you know, if, if you, if you want to be an American, be an American. If you want to be a French person, uh, be a French person, but you can't reject it as you're accepting welfare, shelter, security. Uh, and, of course, this is exactly what's happening. Yeah, and, and whatever market instability might actually come with some, somebody like Marine Le Pen being elected president of France, the reality is I think people who support her will see that sort of as the cost of uh, making a cultural correction in France, which is to sort of get control of their borders and, uh, and ask immigrants, the ones that merit inclusion in the French economy, to sort of assimilate, as you're talking about, and not just exist in their own sphere and in opposition to the reigning culture within France, which, of course, is being battered by, uh, by so much immigration but not enough cultural assimilation. Mm -hmm. So, Jillian, uh, if, if Le Pen, when this is all said and done, doesn't, uh, doesn't win, doesn't ultimately win, well, this, well, could we argue that the populist movement has peaked and perhaps peaked with the election of Donald Trump? I, I would say not. And yeah, I'm going to take the contrarian perspective on this. We're looking at a France where there's a candidate that's to the left of the socialist. So I think that's, that's pretty extreme, and I'm expecting an extreme backlash to it as yeah. well. Well, we're talking about a socialist president with a 4% approval rating.